Hallelujah. Okay. All right. All right. So let's go. First Samuel chapter 15. This, God bless you. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 13. I've been using the same scripture, but it just has a lot of meaning to different people and different applications. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 13. The Bible says, And Samuel came to Saul. And Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleating of the sheep in my ears and the lowering of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from Amalek, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto God. And the rest will utterly destroyed one of the things <laughs> I love about this verse is that one thing happened but had two meaning the first thing is this <laughs> when someone had the sheep bleaten he had the meh meh to Saul that went to war Saul said the sound you hear is the sound of victory and conquest. It's a sound that shows that, hey, we took over Amalek and wiped it out. This is the proof. But when Samuel came and heard the sound of meh, meh, Samuel said, we have a problem. Because the sound of meh, meh is the sound of disobedience to God's instruction. One thing two different perspectives. You know why I'm saying this to you? Because in life, one of the ways you will help yourself is to give yourself a perspective that helps you. What happens is not as powerful as the perspective you give yourself. What happens it's not as powerful as the perspective you give yourself. I'll give an example. A lot of single people will say they are delayed. But sometimes, what you call delayed preparation. I'll give an example. Moses was raised to deliver the children of Israel. But the Bible says this. <laughs> That when he was raised, he went out and started killing people. And God understood, I don't need a soldier to deliver my people. I need some kind of military intelligence. What I need is a shepherd's heart. So Moses had to go back into the wilderness to learn how to become a shepherd. To develop what? A shepherd's heart. When Moses was in the wilderness, you will have concluded that he was delayed in destiny. You will have not realized that he was not delayed in destiny. He was actually being prepared for destiny. Preparations. Delay preparations. Delay preparations. Delay preparations. Perspective. Because sometimes if you're not careful, you will think that God is delaying you being while God is preparing you. And the reason I'm saying so is that the way someone that is delayed, they approach the way they think, the energy they have is not the same as someone that's what? That is being prepared. Someone that is delayed feels angry, feels bitter, feels with, uh, held back, feels anxious. Someone that is being prepared is excited because he knows that my graduation day is coming. He's really looking forward towards it. Very different. So why am I saying this to you? So the reason why I'm saying this, this is very powerful. The reason why I'm saying this to you is this. Because perspective matter. What you call delay, maybe God preparing you. And if you don't have the right attitude, instead of you to begin to embrace the lessons of preparation, you will begin to resist it because in your mind, it's the fact that I'm delayed. The second thing I want to say is that sometimes white perspective are powerful because what you call disappointment can be diversion. What you call what? Disappointment can be what? Diversion. Let me ask you a question. And ask this in the third service. And nobody got it. And please, if, you, if I ask you, you want to check the answer, don't raise up your hands. 
who here knows the name of the first husband of Ruth? You know the name. What's the name, sir? What? Manon. One person. No other person knows. Who knows the name of the, of the next, of second husband of Ruth? Oh, wow. Everybody knows it. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. When Ruth lost the first husband, Manon, what would she have thought? I'm disappointed. Could it be that the real person that would connect her to destiny was Boaz? That Manos was just a turning to get to Boaz. Did you get what I mean? So, the reason why he met Manos was because the only way he could connect to Boaz was that he had to go through what? This guy. But in its in her short-sightedness, when she had that breakup, she could have thought for a moment, she could have thought for a moment that, oh my goodness, it's over. Meanwhile, what she called disappointment was a diversion. Are you here, somebody? No, that energy is so low. Are you here, somebody? Sometimes, what you, what you need just to be patient because what you call the disappointment is God diverting you. His, see, sometimes God knows how to close small doors because of big doors ahead of you. Let me give my personal story. Long story, short story, long story. I got admission to the of Lagos. I lost the admission because my result was not out. By the time my result was out, University of Lagos had resumed. The late registration was closed. I couldn't resume. So, you know, and, and I was meant to study accounting in the University of Lagos. I got under me. So I was trying to get into other schools. I got, I got to UI. UI did not have my course because I wanted to study accounting. UI did not have my course. If it was a year behind, I was going to wait a year to resume. So eventually, I couldn't get to UI because they had economics. I was studying accounting. Then later on, <laughs> you know, poly started and um, I got to UI. By the time I got to Unipoly, I'm um, sorry, Poly Badon, I was already very late to get to Poly Badon. So eventually, I got to Poly Badon. And when I got to Poly Badon, you know, um, Accounting was closed, in, in, um, in admission was full. The only one that was available was accounting education. So you don't come out with the HND accounting. You come out with the HND what? HND education. And you know, my father just told me, and he said this to me. He said that, you know what? If you told me you wanted to be a teacher, I have no problem with it at all. But if because you're trying to get into school, you change your mind to be a teacher, then I have a problem with it. He said, you will not go there. I cried. But listen, looking back, I thank my God that I did not go to the route of Ibadopoli. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. But for me, I feel as if my destiny was bent. See, when I was going through it, I felt disappointment. But looking back right now, it was a diversion. The reason I'm saying so is this. You need to be careful the story you tell yourself. Because sometimes when you think God's disappointment, sorry, God's diversion and disappointment, and when you think God's diversions and disappointment, you begin to resist it. And instead of you to allow it, when you think that God's, you know, God's preparations and delays, you begin to what? Resist it. And that's what I don't want it to do. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So, let me start with, let me start with, with the single people. Why do people experience marriage to delay? Number one, because some people are not ready. Some people are just immature. Not all people, some people are just immature. Number two, some people are not ready. See, let me tell you something. When you're matured, eh? What you are looking for differs. I'm a pastor. If you see why people don't date, that people tell me, I just say, hey, you lack wisdom. And if unfortunately you don't know, someone said, Pastor, I can't date him. He has H factor. The person that said that was single for the next 10 years. That guy that had H factor moved to the US. His H factor disappeared. When he came back, they were in the same church. His English was better than his uh, English. I said, the reason why is that when you're immature, you look for ice cream, you don't look for substance. I, 
are you here somebody but if you're here say amen. amen some people are very immature because what you need to ask yourself is this this is what you need to single people to ask yourself what will be there tomorrow that's the truth what will be there tomorrow some things are really nice for today some things matter today next year two years time three years time but in the next five years they do not matter again and some of you will make a life-changing decision based on something that does not matter again in five years. So one of the reasons why people are delayed in relationship is that they're just immature and unready. So they keep looking for all this kind of toys. They keep looking for all these kind of things. And you know, sometimes God doesn't send you, God, doesn't, God sends you potentials and wants you to nurse it. The second reason why I delayed is because, you know, and, I, and I've said this before, I don't want to dwell on it because I want to dwell on the third one. Some people are delayed because they are single, but they are unavailable. If someone is calling me, and you are calling me, it will say line busy. But is my line busy? It's not the, on the phone. It's the fact that the two calls are what? Are jamming. There are people that are single, but they are what? So question, are you single and unavailable? Let me explain to you. And I'm going to take some perspective. Recently I did a, and I, I believe that this has been streamed, right? Is it been streamed at the back? Yeah, yeah. Recently, I just wanted to know, you know, recently, yeah, recently I did um, a conference for, you know, um, for people in the US and one lady you know I would just pray and I said what do you want to pray about relationship and I say one last did you date and when she told me I just felt I'm not sure the US or the, or, or the, or the UK group and I said what, what is the challenge and she was just struggling with her relationship there's nobody coming and I said why is nobody coming you know he said everybody I meet this is it so as I began to ask a question I was seeing more eventually there's someone she broke up with I think five or six years ago and Although they've broken up and the person is married with two kids, she's still in love with the person. And she's hoping the person will come back. Listen to me. See, she may not say that I'm hoping, but in her mind. So every time she meets someone, that guy is a standard. Subconsciously. And what she doesn't know she's doing to herself is that she's single, but she's not available emotionally. How do people not become available emotionally? Three or four ways. Number one, People are connected to relationship in their past that has occupied their emotions. Those are people that are single but not available emotionally. So, you've broken up with him. You've broken up with that. You're still going to check his Instagram page. You're still checking his Facebook page. See, you don't understand. You're not available because you are still stuck in the past. So, although you've broken up literally, your emotion is too tied to the past. And unfortunately, you know some people carry this into marriage. The second book that's single and unavailable is this. There's a people. Hmm. And these are the older single. Because they've been single for such a long time, they found how to distract themselves with other things. So you will see them at work. They walk till they left they are the one that carries the job as if it's something else. And the reason why is that there's something they're running away for. There's, there's a gap they don't want to feel. So, they keep feeling it and they wonder, why am I single? Listen to me, there's no way you can be noticed. All the places to be emotionally available has been occupied. You found good substitute to occupy it. So, we can't find you again. They're single. And what? What's happening? Who knows what I'm talking about? Can I say the last category of single? Isn't that the last category? The one on the now? Just one more category. Single and unavailable are people that are dating people they do they can't marry. You have, you, you, thank you, my brother. You, you have to say points like this. Ah. We single and unavailable. You are dating people you know what? You cannot marry. Just for you to know, just P.S. Just give me, just wait. Most people 
that old and single, 80% of them are single at old age because they stayed in the wrong relationship for a very long time. And by the time they stepped out of it, they had passed the prime. And everybody has prime. Because life is in seasons. What a relationship did not come out of marriage. It may be sometimes regular that you're dating. You know there's no future. You stay there. But it may be someone, you're here, but you're very involved with this person that cannot marry you. Either because he's married, he's some Eastern state, but you're just there. And one year goes, and two years go, and you move from 27, and you're 28, and you're 29, and you're 30. You eventually have the courage to leave at 35, when all your mates have married. Who knows someone like this? Who knows someone like this? This happens to someone. You know someone like that? Can, can you share with me the story? Can you? Let, let me give my friend the microphone, the fair lady. Share with me the story. Share with me the story. Your pastor, yeah? yeah share with me the story. Share with me the story. At least the parts you know, I, I guess you don't know everything. I'm the one. Oh, you're the one. How long did you stay there? Five years. Hold on. So hold on. Oh. Your friend is so sweet. So hold on. You knew you couldn't marry him. And you stayed for five years. Why did you do that? Because let me tell you something. It's good to laugh, but people have their reasons. Why did you do that? We want to learn from you. It's okay to cry. It's okay to cry. She can't talk, right? It's okay. Come, come, can, can I give you a hug? Can, can you come? Can, can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? Come, I want to pray for you. I, I want you to close your eyes and stretch forth your hands this way. I want you to come, come. I want to pray for you. I want everyone to stretch forth your hands towards me as I pray for her. And I want to believe that all the years lost are going to restore. And Lord Jesus, I pray for your daughter. What she has not said you heard and nobody can restore time but you please Lord by the time I see you next year you will have a full testimony this tears it will be tears again but it will be tears of joy in Jesus name Praise God. The, the reason, and, and you know, and someone says, why do you do this? The reason I do this is because, listen, I'm tired of churches that can't help people. You know, in, in the second service, we had an European lady come here. In the third service, second, second service or third service, and she said, pure white lady, he said, if our churches in Europe were this way, they'll be full of people. He said, there's a first church I see and it's come alive. I don't want to go. He said, I've not been to church in a long time. He said, is this how church is right now? I'm just really tired of churches that will not use the word of God to help people. Then what do the pastors do? Oh, they just want to just collect offering. It has to be more than that. People, see, people are going through tough things. The other day I just heard about the Booker Hot CEO that just committed suicide. And, and, and the thing is that the church is the, is the ray of, is the light of the world. There's hope. And I'm, I'm saying this because you need to understand what kind of church we are and what we're doing as a church and what we believe. We believe that this Bible can change people, but it's not just change people. It must be brought to you in such a way that you can understand and receive transformation. And there are single people that will stay in the wrong relationship. 
I want to get two reasons why people stay in the wrong relationship for, and they know it's wrong and they stay for a long time. I mean, she could not tell us why, and I understand that and I respect that. But maybe you've been through that, maybe your friend has been through that. I want something that you, you've been through or your friend has been through, and you know your story you want to share. Anybody that wants to share with us? Yeah. Yeah. F- thank you. That there's a lady, that there's a, will you start with this lady up front here? Yeah. Yeah. You can sit down, the microphone will come to you. You can sit down because my intention is just yeah, just take the microphone. Um, I'm sharing a friend's um, encounter. Yeah. So I feel like, and this is a lot of friends, female friends. When time starts to pass, it's just easier to stay with the person that you're familiar with. Mm. It's not necessarily because of a a tangible reason. It's just you feel like you know this it's person. Comfort zone. Yes, the comfort zone. Did, did you see that? It's comfort zone. You stay comfort zone and it eventually kills you. Exactly. So the reason why is that as we're speaking, there are people hearing me right now all everywhere and you are right now in your comfort zone. You know it's not going to work, but they want to take a risk. Thank you. Can you move to someone else? Someone else? There's a brother wearing white again. Yeah, I, I want a man to talk. Yeah. Um, the, this for a guy though. Um, he had a lady that had a kid for him and he was hoping she would come back for like seven years because of his kid and eventually she got married to someone else. He hasn't look, been able to move on. Look, look at that. And he, he has not been able to move on. There, there's someone over there also. There's a lady. Yeah. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm just seeing you. Yeah. Just tell me. So it's, um, I'm sharing a friend's story, right? She stayed because she didn't want to disappoint her parents. Oh. Public opinion. Yeah. Did, did, did you hear that? She stayed. Let me tell you something. Disappoint your pastor. The only person you should not disappoint is God. Just make sure that God is in it. Praise God. So, I'm, that's all we can, I can do right now because I want to move to the next thing. So, the reason I'm saying so is this. Eventually, look at that guy. Look at that lady. For five years, she was there. But thank God because there's a miracle right now we've prayed. Look at that guy. He spoke about, you know, you know for seven years. And even after seven years, the guy is still stuck. Maybe the guy has been waiting for 10, 15 years now. And hoping that one day to come back. Let me tell you something about relationships. Ever look up here. Let me look up. Because sometimes Christians, because we pray, sometimes we don't pray correctly. Something is in, something, sometimes our head, eh? something happens to it. No prayer. No prayer. Can make someone do what they don't want, to, don't want to do. No prayer. Can make someone do what they don't want to do. There's no prayer that can do that. You know why? If there's a prayer that can do that, everybody will be born again. Because we'll use prayer to convince them to be born again. There's one gift God gave every man. It's called what? Will. If he loves you, if you love him, he doesn't love you. You pack, you give him time. When the time is reasonable, time cannot be one year that is reasonable. That's unreasonable. You pack your load and move. You don't let someone even some people use a ring to deceive you. They say, we're engaged. Will you, you're, you're engaged eight years. I've seen eight years engagement too. You want to become Lord of the Rings? Even the ring is, is peeling off in color. Somebody say Hallelujah. So the third reason for marital delays is and this third reason for marital delay. The third reason that for marital delay and also affect marriages is emotional baggages. What, what does emotional baggage look like? And, and this is where I'm going to close today. It's emotional baggages. What does emotional baggage look like? Emotional baggages, it's something we all grew up with. Everybody has a baggage. And the baggage is in you. But the way you know you have a baggage is this. A baggage begins to create a cycle. It's 
an emotional issue that begins to affect you as a single person not to marry. And if you're married, it begins to disturb your marriage. I will tell you what my emotional... There are a lot of emotional baggages. They, they, you know, there's fear. I'll give it, let, let me talk to you about my friend. My, my friend, she's a top... She's almost 40 years old. She's a top executive in one of the oil companies. And I was in Dubai, you know, and because she confides in me as a pastor, you know, she had told me that she has sexual problems. As a matter of fact, she's married and one, one or two times her husband cuts on her sleeping with her. And after that time, they still cut on her sleeping with her. And I looked at her and I said, you have an emotional problem. And I knew where it came from. But what the problem was, was that her father never loved her. Her mother never loved her. She, she... She was the best in school. But guess what? She became the best in school trying to win their love. And she never got it. And eventually, she's looking for this love. See, when you see people that sleep around, you need to ask them, what are they looking for? Most people that sleep around, girls or guys, are not looking for sex. They're looking for connection. They're looking for someone that will love them. But the expression of that is what? It's sex. And there's that emptiness. I know, I know people, I know ladies that date older men, and they can't tell why they're attracted to older men. I will just tell the reason why. Sometimes it's not 100%. 80% of the time, they're looking for your father that was missing. 80%, not all the time. You're looking for that father that was never there. And that's why when your mate, so this is you, you this I affect you being single. When your mate come, you say, what, what are these small boys? Because in your mind, you think you're looking for love. You're looking for a father. And that's why, listen to me, if you attend this kind of church, you must find a way to get into a group. You can have all the people in this church mentor you as fathers. What was my emotional baggage? I'm going to tell you my own. So the first emotion is fear. How do you know you have an emotional baggage? I will tell you the fear. You will just have this fear that you just have this fear that cannot make you trust somebody. You have this fear that someone is going to cheat you. You have this fear that someone is going to abuse you. Like, why do you have that? The reason why you have the fear is because there's something what inside you. There's something you carry. Give me my emotional bag emotional baggage. Yeah, give me my emotional baggage. But the challenge is this: this is my emotional baggage. You've carried it for so long. You are so used to it. You don't even know you're carrying something. As soon as a guy comes, all he wants is sex. Why do you think that way? The reason why you think that's because something has gone wrong on the inside. And unfortunately, because that's how you think, as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. Some of you, because of the fear of poverty, you cannot see men because all you look for are rich people. Oh my, yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, 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 yo. He's the fear of poverty. So as soon as he comes and he doesn't have a great car, your mind cannot even see him as a potential mate. Because your fear is emotional. And, and the thing, the fear is that it is on you. It, it disturbs you. When people have emotional baggage, you know what happens to them? They see a cycle. They see the same pattern. They keep attracting heartbreakers. Even when they marry, you know what happens to them? The same thing their boyfriend complains about, their husband complains about, their wife complains about. And the reason why, bring my basket, bring my basket. This is my emotional baggage, bring my basket. The reason why is this. Because you're going to understand a lot right now. You are this basket. All this trash is the emotional baggage. You are this basket. All this trash is what? Is the emotional baggage. So, once you put the trash can down, what happens after some time? Rats, rodents, flies will go there. Yes or no? Why do they go there? Because of the baggage inside. Listen to me. The reason why you keep attracting rats, rodents as a single person, you keep attracting rats, rodents as a married person, is because of the baggage inside. So guess what single people do? So they leave Chike and think Chike is a problem. And they move to what? They move to John. And when they move to John, the cycle continues because they are just changing location. They've not changed the baggage. 
And that's why if you want to be honest, the cycles of your singleness are the same. If you want to be honest, even now that you're married, the cycle is still the same. And the reason why is that your thinking is the other person, but there's a baggage you are carrying on the inside. And he said, when I moved to Canada, he said, I'm, I, I don't want to date Nigerian men again. I want to date white people. I want to date white girls. If you like, date Filipinos. You know, as far as you have package, they will treat you what? The same. Because you will keep attracting those things. Are you here? Someone say hallelujah. I want to tell you my story so I can tell you my package. My father has, my, my, my parents are late. My father had four wives. I had a British stepmom. I had a Jamaican stepmom. I had a Nigerian stepmom. And I have my mom. That's why we're international. <laughs> Hold on. story says that a boy came in my father's life and he felt that all the kids live with their mothers except he was with my Jamaican stepmom and their kids and says let them come together this is what the story says my father was an ex-police officer he was one of the police leaders my Jamaican stepmom brought out the gun and told him my father's name is Emmanuel he said Emmanuel if you bring any wife and kid here I will kill them. I will kill you. I will kill myself. And that was how I lost the opportunity of ever living with my father. Not just me, me and my siblings. And the arrangement was that my father would come certain days, but as he grew older, she just stopped coming. And sometimes I will not see my dad for two or three months, two or three years. And we ultimately lost a relationship. I have no memory of my father carrying me up. Absolutely none. None. That my father took me like this and carried me up. No memory. I have no memory of my father coming to visit me in school. Either primary, secondary, I was in boarding school for six years. Or university that my father ever came to visit me in school. Why is this happening? Because your father has other children and wife. And now you're like a second class citizen within your family. And the baggage I began to have was I began to have a negative self-love because I felt as if nobody wanted me. That's exactly how I felt. That nobody wanted me. To make matters worse, I was about seven or eight. I went to go to see my cousins, my father's younger brother. He's a doctor. And when I went to see them, we were playing. Normally, I would go in the morning. Drivers would drop me in the morning, pick me up in the evening. They dropped me, and we were playing. Then my father and my stepmom made an arrival. They lived in this huge building. The ground floor was the hospital. The middle floor was the resident doctors. And they live on the third floor. <sighs> So in the middle, I didn't even know what was happening. I just knew there was panic. Pop, 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 running down the staircase. So all of a sudden, my uncle just came and said, Bolaji, your stepmom is here. You know she can't see you. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that. Just imagine this eight-year-old boy that understands that, that your father is downstairs. But you cannot see your father because your stepmom is with him. And I've not seen my father before that time for four months. But the worst thing that happened is that my uncle just told me, he said that, this is transport fare. Take bus and go home. I said, I don't know how to do that. He said, I'm sorry, I can't help you right now. Just find a way. Take bus and go home. That's the bus stop. Take this bus. This is your bus stop. Tell the, the and get down. And because they were doing that to make sure that there's no trouble. But as a young child of seven and eight, I felt, and I took the money, and I walked, because I didn't know how to take bus, and I walked two hours home, because that was the only way. I see the road, but I didn't know the bus part. And as I walked home that day, I cried. 
I said, what kind of life is this? But what that did to me was this. I grew up with rejection. Because I felt nobody wanted me. So how did my mother... So my mother was always wanted it. But my mother had her struggles. And my mother told... You know, my mother... Because... See, because of how it was, my mother felt... We don't, I, don't have, I don't really have a husband. I better put more work into my business so that the kids don't suffer. So my mother used to come home 10 p.m. every night. So we had a working mom. Then when my mother wants to challenge me to do better, better in life, it would say, look at you. Look at your siblings. They already think they're better than you. And you are getting 10th position in class. Are you okay? And she was saying this to challenge me to get better. But the effect it was having was killing me. Then one day, my mother discovered I was going to become a pastor. Because she had seen the signs. And my mother was, she was angry, she was bitter because in a way she wanted to also prove to my dad that we're going to be successful and we're equal to the other children and my mom looked at me I remember this day so much in my face and said I regretted I ever had you he said if I knew that out of everything in the world what you would be as a pastor I would have aborted you he said, you want to be like the pastor of my church that if I don't pay tight, will use me to preach a sermon. He says, you will not do business. You will not take over a job. He's pastoring. You want to do. And I grew up in a place in my life where I wasn't used to love. The challenge with that is this. The good thing, let me tell you the good thing for me. The good thing is that one of the th- all those things drove me to Jesus because I found the place in Jesus. Yeah. But the bad thing was this. It messed me up relational wise. Because when people, when I got into romantic relationship, my wife asked me when we started dating, he said, what do you want from this relationship? I said, nothing. The reason why I said all my life, I have never known what it means to be loved. My wife asked me, how do you want to be loved? I said, I do not know. Ask my wife. I said, how do you want to be loved? I said, I do not know. Because I have no idea. I found myself, even within church, I would be in relationships where people would continually abuse me. When I say abuse me, they would treat me in such a way that it's not right. But I thought that was how, if that's how my father treated me, if that's how my mother treated me, these are not my relatives. And I was carrying this emotional baggage. Do you know how hard it is? There's a girl when I was in school. Thank God my wife is not here. There's a girl when I, I mean my wife knows the person because we were all in school together. The girl was madly in love with me and that was why I broke up with her. Oh, I never dated her. Let me tell you how it was. How was a pastor in school? Because you need to see what the issues is and how they affect you. Because you need to check. You keep moving your dustbin. You keep moving your dustbin. You keep moving it. But what is inside the dustbin, you're not treating it. Some of you, you know what it is? The emotional issue is that you've been abused. You've been raped. You want to get married, but you can you, but before you get married, we have to deal with that horrible experience of rape. And the rape could have been your dad, it could have been your mom, it could have been someone close to you. But instead of you to deal with it, you keep praying and moving your basket. And God is saying, Don't you understand? Before I can give you a partner, I need to heal you, or else I will give you what damage to somebody else and when I give a damaged person to somebody else you will damage him because that's what hurts people do hurt people hurt people and a lot of you that are praying and that's why a lot of marriages are suffering where are my plates bring my plates for me a lot of marriages are suffering and the reason why they're suffering is simple that's not what I'm asking I'm asking for the plates you know the reason why they're suffering is the fact that it was two damaged people that came together. 
So it's a competition of how do we what? Damage one another. When you come into a marriage, you should come with, you should come whole as a plate. You should be single. Single means whole. You should be single whole. You should be single whole. But most people don't come single like that. What do they come? They come half. So, you are half. He is half. He said the two shall become one. Not the two halves shall become one. The current marriage works when two whole people become one. Not when two damaged people become one. The problem is that you are thinking that marriage will fix you. No, marriage only amplifies you. He said two are better than one. That means if, we're, if, if, if you were damaged before, when you are married, you will be what? You will be better at damaging. You will be a damaging contractor. A damaging specialist. This girl, when we're in school, she would always come check me. But I could not commit. I could not commit. I could not say we're dating. I could not. How could I say we're dating? I don't know what love is. She will come. She will come. She used to stay without traffic. So like two and a half hours from University of Lagos. Drive. She doesn't have a car because it's long ago. One day, I, I told her, oh, because I was a church, I was a fellowship pastor. I said, it was weekend, there was Easter. I didn't go home. There was nobody to see at home. I said, I'm here. And they said, oh, thank you in school. I said, there's no food. That all the food stations are closed. So I've gone home. You know what? In two hours, I saw her in my hostel. She had brought food. She hired a t- She made the food. I said, I just bought the food. I dropped the food. I'm, I'm going back home. But you know what? I couldn't. As a matter of fact, I, she told me that what is wrong? I said, I don't know what is wrong. I, and I told her, I think you're not in your senses. That's what I told her. I think you're not in your senses. I think that, I said, the way you love, I don't think this is how normal people love. I thought she was the problem. I did not know I was so damaged. I could not receive love. Is that not what is happening in your marriage? You're so damaged that your husband is loving you, your wife is loving you, but you cannot receive love because of your emotional baggage. I remember some years ago, before my mom passed away, I sat her down. I said, why did you do this to me? And she looked at me and said, I'm sorry. He said, that was the best I knew. He said, I was only trying to motivate you but it was in a negative way. Two years ago, my stepmom, my Jamaican stepmom, she's moved back to Britain where she met my dad. Two or three years ago, she was 80. And she called me and said, thank you for wishing me a happy birthday. I just want to apologize to you. I want to apologize because I never allowed you to spend time with your father. He said, but listen to my side of the story. I'm not a Nigerian. I was raised in a foreign culture. I don't understand polygamy. He said, that was why I responded that way. I thought they were trying to cheat me in a native land. He says, I'm older. I lived in Nigeria for years. Now I understand it. He said, but the damage has been done. He said, all I can do is to ask for your forgiveness. And she said, can I get your brother's number? Can I get your sister's number? I would love to call them and also apologize to them. This is unfortunate your mom is dead by now. And all I kept asking myself was this. If I'd allow this to ruin my life, where will I be? In my family, 
I probably were the only one that is still married right now. My sister said, it's a demonic thing. I said, no, it's a programming. Because there were emotional baggages we carried into this. You see, I'm a very honest pastor. I'm not perfect. And I'm saying to you, all of you that are married, even if you're married, it doesn't change anything. You still carry it. You will be in that marriage and you will be so lonely and your partner will try to do everything to make you happy and you will think it's your partner's fault. Meanwhile, it's you. Have you loved someone that it seems like a bottomless pit? No matter what you do, it doesn't reach them because there's something wrong. And I'm saying so because the first thing you have to do today is to identify the pattern. You need to sit down and identify the pattern and say, this is wrong. Why do I keep attracting people that break my heart? Why, do, why is my marriage so sad? Some of you are here. You know the challenge? You're trying so hard not to be like your dad, not to be like your mom. And that's what you're becoming like. You saw how your mom was maltreated because she had no finance. And you know, one lady, the question in the other service, he said that I saw how my father abused my mom because she had no finance. He said, I made up my mind. I will have my source of income. You get into a marriage. The man says, don't work for two years. Get pregnant. He said, never, never. You, I know what you want to do. He has nothing. You are just reacting from your past. You are the kind of person that puts mileage on when your husband goes because your father was a cheater. So you say, oh, honey, where did you go? He said, how do you know? She'll be your driving is just 25 kilometers. You went today, it's 32. And 32 means that that's your friend that is a girl. That's a son to our house. And the reason, see, there's, you, be, you start calling problems to your marriage. You start calling what does not exist. And the reason why is that there's emotional baggage that you need to take off. But you are so, do you notice how I'm, I don't even feel it? Because you can get so used to it, you never feel it. To, to you, all the girls, all they want is sex. What did that, what happened to you? Where did you grow up? Who told you that? What happened to you? All the girls want is money. What happened to you? There's this fear you have. Another pattern is attachment and deta detachment. When you just, you, some of you, to detach is a problem. When you attach, I mean, there's a, there's a divorce I was in, involved in, and one divorce, they brought the divorce to me. I said, I told them, I said, but I told you guys 15 years ago that this will end up bad. I said, because the way this girl was hanging on, I knew she had a negative attachment syndrome. You just can't let go. You, you can't let go. You can't let go. Because there's a story within it. You've been left alone for so long, you just can't let go. And if you're watching and you're listening, Jesus is healing you today. James chapter 5 verse 16, this is what Jesus Christ said. Let's read James 5 16. Who knows what I'm talking about? You know, you know, who has a story to share? I, I want just one person to have a story to share. Who has a story to share? I've seen one hand. Come and give her the mic. Where, where's the hand here? Who has a story to share? Yep. Do you want to share? to me, my mom. I watched my dad abusing my mom physically. I was born in Lagos because of that. Um, my mom had to move, I and my siblings, to Port Harcourt. 
and all, all work I can say is that from the day I was born to now, I never had a father's love. <laughs> My dad never trained me in school. <laughs> I'm done with school now. I'm done serving. I just finished serving two months ago. My dad never spent a dime on me. How do you feel about men? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. How do you feel about men? I just hate them. <laughs> See, this is, let, let me tell you something. This is the levers going on right now. Because. My lady, you can take the microphone. Let me tell you something. Two things you need to know. Please, nobody's moving around now. This is a very calm moment of the Spirit of God. Two things you need to know. What your father did is not a representation of what all men are. There are more men, there, there are men that cared more than the women. Is that not true? True. There are men that cared more than the women. And the second thing is this. And this is the way you forgive your parents. When you remember that your parents had their own struggles. You remember they had their struggles. My mother, my mother came to Lagos selling ice cream. That's what my mother came to Lagos doing. My father was born from a rich family. My mother came to Lagos selling ice cream. So, because of the depravity, financial independence was foremost. And she saw everything through financial independence. When she came to Lagos, she was sleeping on the staircase in Bariga. She told me she had to walk kilometers. She had to go and pack wood in the morning first and sell before she goes to school. The way you would do, because I don't want you to go and attack them. No, no, no. You need to understand that they also, you grow now. You, you grow now. So you are going to have, you're also having children and you have your own challenges. Praise God. See what the Bible says. This is how you receive healing. It says, confess your fault to one another. He says, you must talk about this. And that's why, listen to me, you need to find a way to go to the growth track. And says, I need to belong to a group. I need to find a pastor. I need, see, this cannot heal by touch and go. You need to find a solid pastor. And says, walk me through this process. He says, confess your fault to one another. And do what? Pray for one another that you may be what healed there must be that discussion there must be that prayer and then it comes to healing this is why many marriages are not happy just imagine that lady if eventually if she has a boyfriend the boyfriend will wonder what am i doing wrong but fundamentally where's my basket fundamentally it's not what he's doing wrong the fundamental thing is that there's garbage there's garbage and until the garbage is removed listen to me this teaching this month might be some of the best you've ever heard on relationship I don't know who you've listened to but we're going into the roots and taking what let me tell you why relationship teaching never work they tell you do this do this do this how do you do when your mind is not here correct when there's problem inside what do you do no matter what you do what is inside trumps outside Some of you, you're just very so hard. Where did this come from? You're just very hard. Hey, baby, what? <laughs> Why are you like that? And some of you, all they have to do is to smile, legs open. Once they just smile, whew, legs open. Hello, come. Same thing with guys. Same thing with guys. It's also guys are emotional. Guys are more emotional, but they hide it. You know how, you know, when they manifest it, they will just kill themselves. That's what they do. They will get drunk. But guys, you don't have to be like that. You can reach out for help. Can one more person share their experience and we'll pray. 
Any other person? There's someone. Yeah. Yeah, give it, give gear. Yes, please go ahead. Um, so this is very personal to me. Um, so growing up, I have not really always, I've never been the most feminine girl growing up. And I grew up with uh, six sisters and three brothers. So I come from a large family. And I've always been told, you know, you're ugly. No one is going to love you. Um, you're not going to amount to anything. You're not beautiful. Like, <laughs> you're even going to get married. All these things, you know. So for the longest time, I said, okay, you know what? I'm not going to get married. Because marriage, there's no marriage in heaven. I told myself, there's no husband and wife in heaven. So I'm not going to die because of this. I'm just going to make And, and also notice something. The people that were telling her that were not telling her to pull her down. Mm. They were hoping it would motivate her mm. to do better. Yeah. Continue, ma'am. So, um, I said I was going to make money and, and that's just it. Just focus on myself. And as I got closer to God and I started attending, you know, going for therapy and everything, I started realizing that, um, you know, everyone is beautiful. You know, the, the popular saying, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Everyone has someone that would find them beautiful. And I used to tell myself, even when guys approach me, I'm always, just, like, I actually used to tell them, are you okay? Can you not see? Like, it's not me. Well, watch that. <laughs> see, Literally. she in the mind, yeah. but one part of you wants to get married. Yes or no? One part of you but, wants to get married. One part of you wants to get married. Oh, I want to marry next year. Yeah. See, <laughs> watch. One part, hold on, hold on. One part of her wants to get married. But when people approach her, is it, are you dumb? Are you see? This is the reason for delay. The conflict. There's an inner conflict. That's why your prayer is not working. It's not as if God is not answering. This, so before you know it, negative will come. Positive will come. Negative will come. So there's shock. There's electric shock inside. We must kill it. Thank you. Thank you. Let, let that guy talk. Thank you. I, I, want, I want a guy to talk. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor V. These are, this level of damage is deep, like extremely deep. Right from uh, my age of three, if I, like I can remember very well, I was sexually abused by um, teenage girls around. When my mom goes to farm, uh, they would take me on site with my uh, elder sister. I come from a polygamous family. I've never experienced uh, my mom and dad woke up in the same house and uh, that was eight wives and my mom was the last wife and um so when, when you were young those girls would come to meet you and start having sex with you yeah at th age three yes so how did this affect so, you it affected me so bad that uh i grew up hungering for sex and um at some point i got myself into drinking smoke bad friends hold on a teenage when this guy now marries a girl and he now says, I can't satisfy the desire. My counselors will now say, use this. Use Viagra. Use this. Can this satisfy it? Ah! You don't understand. The engine is wrong. You are saying change the body. This is why all of the my teachings don't work. Because the damage is on the inside. And the Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? And the reason I'm saying so is that finish like one more minute. Okay, uh, let me just cut the whole story short. So I lost my dad uh, first year in university. So I had a very deep trauma. And um, even the relationship I was in, I could not just focus. So I had to cut off. I had so many talents at the same time. I was just trying to pick up everything, go to trash, pick things, form it into art and sell them. Try to, I graduated with third class from civil engineering. Though I told him at the age of 11, I want to be uh, an artist. So I, I still fall back to my routine. So getting to know God, I was in Catholic and I find a lot of difficulty in trying to know God because it was more of doctrine than knowing God. And uh, when I got to Avesta 17 of April, April, I have a very strong encounter with God wow. and um, I lost hope. I couldn't even pray in the name of Jesus. I remember very well and I told God that this year if you don't touch me, I may stop calling your name and that was just deep down inside me and um, I've been struggling it and uh, it get to a point, I, I can't even have sex in my relationship because I hate sex. 
all I know now is my mom is suffering and everyone is just going through pain. So how can I just uplift the pain and just move on? So I'm just in my world doing my thing. I engage myself. When you're talking about, uh, you know, getting distracted with other things and not finding love, I, I, I saw myself in the picture because 24 hours, six, I'm with my brushes painting, uh, you know, doing my music thing and everything. I don't have time for, uh, for girls. I just see everyone like trees. I just keep moving. So, so, so watch this now. What, watch this now. First position. Untamed sexual desire. Then he found a distraction. Brush. So when he gets married, what will his marriage be like? It's be like a bicycle. Let me tell you something today. If you don't come next Sunday or Wednesday, it's okay. But you only feel more damaged. Because what we've done today is to open the wound. Train yourself. And if you have a brother, a sister, or a friend that is going to drag them with you and say, we must, this is a process you must go together. I'm going to give an assignment. If you need to build a community of people, which I think everybody should, you need a place where you can talk like this. After the service, there's good track. And the, the number will be on the screen. Go to go track. If you need counseling, that this is on the screen. Say, I need counseling. If you're married and you know that I just need to talk, we have a monthly marriage forum that is online. And it's all there. All you have to do is take a picture, send the text message to that number, and they will send you the details. If you're single, you want to meet people, it's right there. If you're a parent, you want to help, it's right there. That's the first step. But the second step is this. This is what you have to do when you go home. Get a barrier and paper. Define what the emotional baggage is. If you don't know what it is, call people that know you and say, where do I struggle? What is affecting me? You'll be surprised. You know, this lady spoke about how she struggled. With her doubt telling me, I knew because I've spoken to her a couple of times so I could tell. Because you're the one that doesn't think it's visible. I can tell it's visible. I can tell she wants to be close to me but she pulls back a whole lot and undermines herself because and that's why every time she wants to talk to me I'm always willing to listen you know if there are four people there if she comes I'm like hold on let me talk to her because I know that if I keep talking to other people she's going to run away is that not true? give her the microphone is that not true? yeah absolutely yeah and she never knew I knew this did you know I knew this? no no but because I can just pick. There are many of you, I would just tell, like, I can tell you're struggling. And sometimes I would even suggest it to you. I mean, I had one of the ladies in church that walks with me. I just spoke to her and I said, hey, I've never seen with a boyfriend. You've walked with me for like five years in some capacity. And I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 I'm not ready. I said, mm-hmm. Ah, once you're not there for five years, I know there's a problem. I said, sit down. And she opened up and said, I was raped. And that rape changed our life. God is healing you right now. Let's pray.